What do people do most of the time when they, what would they like to do, really? What's your idea of heaven? When people are unoccupied, as far as I can make out, they get together and they sing and dance. Or else watch somebody else do it. Nowadays we live in a non-participative culture and we don't do very much singing and dancing. We're lugubrious. But we watch other people do it on television. What we really are interested in is to be able to spend all the time going to hood about it and that's what our hearts doing that's what our lungs are doing is what our eyeballs are doing and it's what all these fantastic capillaries of the veins are doing they're going just judy poo hub see and that's the point now the thing is ought this to be allowed <laughs> You know, a dare we admit it. <laughs> because we've been brought up, you see, in a cultural context in which the universe is presided over by somebody serious. And it's only very, very occasional obscure references in the Jewish and Christian scriptures to the idea that God dances. Of course, in Hindus, they know Shiva dances, and all the gods dance, and they're represented in the, in the dance. But in our way of looking at things, no. Back, deep down in, there is something that you must respect with a very, very, you, you, mustn't, you mustn't laugh in church especially if you got in front of the throne of heaven, everybody would be dead silent. Wow, you see, I mean, that's really serious. Here is the Father Almighty world without end. And you watch out. Don't you laugh. Why not? Because Father Almighty world without end is a very insecure fellow. <laughs> And uh, if anybody laughed, he might feel uneasy, you know, that there was something, uh, something wrong going on, <laughs> that someone challenged his power. So he, he is, a, is a funny fellow, you see, as we've mythologized ultimate reality in the form of this cosmic uh, grandpapa, who is also a king and is demanding above all things reverence and respect. So it's difficult for us because of that cultural heritage to accept, to accommodate our common sense to the idea that the web might basically be playful. That it might be like somebody saying, won't you come and play with me, a child? And the other child uh, has some little hesitation. I don't know whether I ought to play with you. You come from the wrong side of the tracks. Or um, I don't feel like playing today. I feel serious. I don't think play is important. We ought to do something real, like uh, wash the dishes for mother. Who, incidentally, has forgotten that the whole point of washing the dishes is playful. You know, uh, you don't wash the dishes for a serious reason. You, you like the table to look nice, you know. You don't want to serve up the dishes for d dinner with all the leavings of breakfast still lying on them. Uh, so why do you want the table to look nice? Well, again, it's for nice, you see. It's, uh, it's, uh, you like the pattern on it that way. People get terribly compulsive about doing these things. And they think that uh, going on arranging the patterns of life is something that's a duty. That means a debt that you owe it to yourself or to your family or to someone or other. You're in debt. See, that's the trouble. When a child comes into the world, the parents play an awful game on it. Instead of being honest, they say, 
we've made such great sacrifices for you. Here we are, we've supported you, we've uh, paid for your education, and you're an ungrateful little bastard. And uh, the child feels terribly guilty because what we do is we build into every human being the idea that existence is guilt. The, the existentialists make a big thing of this. And you watch out for them because they're hoaxes. And they say that guilt is ontological. If you're not feeling guilty, you're not human. And that was because Papa and Mama said, look at all the trouble you've caused us. You shouldn't dare to exist. You have no rights. But maybe we'll give you some out of the generosity of our heart so that you'll be permanently indebted to us. And so everybody goes around with that sort of thing in their, in their background unless they had different kinds of Papas and Mamas who didn't play that trick on them. But so many Papas and Mamas do do that. And if they don't do it, somebody else does it. Auntie comes around and says, you don't realize what your father and mother have done for you. You think you know you can just stay around here and goof off. But they have sweated blood to uh, give you your clothes and food and so on, and you, you ought to be grateful for it. But that's not the way to make people grateful. They won't be grateful that way. They'll imitate gratefulness. They'll go and put on a big show and say, oh, thank you so much, I feel so indebted to you, and so on and so forth, and they'll make it look good. But it isn't real. Because, actually, one's father and mother had a great deal of fun bringing you into being, or we hope they did. And they wanted to do that the worst way. They have no reason to complain about all these things and try and make the children feel guilty. But you see, it is an amazing thing in our culture that everybody is afflicted with ontological guilt. For example, if a policeman comes to the door, Everybody is instantly frightened. You wonder, what on earth have I done? And there are certain clergy who are absolute experts in making you feel guilty. They are really marvelous. And there are clergy of all kinds, for all classes, and for all levels of intelligence. <laughs> and they can make you feel real guilty. <laughs> Only you have to watch always what games people now you see, the thing is, that really is a puzzle, is that they don't admit they're playing games. And when a person is playing games and doesn't admit that they're playing games, then you have some kind of a, of a trickster who um, isn't really being fair to you. Now of course, the game, that this game is not a game, has a certain kind of a fascinating quality to it. How mixed up can we all get? Let's try. See? That, that is that certain possibility in that. I, I would like to go insane and be as insane as anybody has ever been and uh, be the farest out crazy nut in the world. See? That's a game. But it's not a good game. It's uh, a game being played by a person who didn't really understand that everyday life was a game too. And I think the most important thing is to admit this.